What's up everyone, Lakonde Mwila here, and we're talking K8s. In this video, I'm gonna be speaking to you about how to make use of port forwarding in Kubernetes using the kubectl or kubectl command. When it comes to exposing your workload or applications um, to external traffic, the standard practice is to make use of ingresses or services like load balancers and node ports. However, this is not exactly an optimal or secure approach if all you wanna do is carry out debugging or um, investigative activities for your pods. And so port forwarding allows you to do that in an exclusive context locally without having to create services beforehand. And so I'm gonna be speaking a bit about port forwarding in general and how that plays out in the context of Kubernetes and then actually do a demo um, with an EKS cluster that I'll be provisioning using Terraform. If you're only interested in the demo, then feel free to jump ahead. Before we get into the details of port forwarding, it might be helpful to take a step back and understand network address translation or NAT because port forwarding is a part of that. And NAT is the process of modifying IP addresses that pass through a router. It's a built-in functionality that conceals the entire um, IP address space. So anytime that you have a computer or a laptop that wants to communicate with the server on the internet, it does so using a public-facing IP address, which will be converted or translated to a private IP. And when you do so, you have to specify a particular port. And so that's where port forwarding comes in. And port forwarding is part of network address translation in that it redirects a single IP and specific port number on one system to another system. Now, you may be wondering, how does port forwarding actually work in the context of Kubernetes? Well, you can use kubectl to set up a proxy that will forward any traffic from a specific port on your local machine to a port on a specific pod that you determine. This is especially useful if you want to have that direct communication from your local machine to a pod in a cluster. And databases are a very fitting use case for this. If you think about it, databases are more likely to be exposed using cluster IP services, which means they can only receive traffic from within the cluster. But what happens if you wanna debug a database application? And so instead of having to go through other means, you could simply make use of kubectl's port forward command so that you can directly access your database application from your local machine. And provided that you have the relevant security measures in place like um, permissions using RBAC, role-based access control, then that way anyone that has the relevant permissions can securely access a pod like a database application uh, from their local machine using port forwarding. All right, in this demo, I'm gonna be provisioning an Amazon EKS cluster using Terraform. If you want access to the source code, it is available in a public repository, and I've put the link in the description, so please go ahead and clone it so you can actually do a similar walkthrough. And um, you will probably be prompted for a profile name as well as a cluster name. In my case, I've already added the values for that um, in the as defaults um, in the variables.tf file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run Terraform apply. And uh, this will take a couple of minutes. I will obviously receive an execution plan. Um, and, uh, oh, looks like I actually didn't enter a cluster name. So I'm just gonna call this my EKS cluster. Um, as I was saying, you'll get an execution plan just with all of the resources that will be created. And um, in this particular repository, there's an entire VPC infrastructure that will be set up and then that EKS cluster will, will be provisioned within that VPC. Um, if you don't know Terraform that much, that's fine. Uh, I have a comprehensive readme that will still help you to be able to carry this out without all those details. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, I want all of those resources created. And once my cluster has been provisioned, I'll then deploy a pod um, of a basic Node.js application without a service for it. And then I will go ahead and demonstrate the kubectl port forward command and we'll test out accessing that application. All right, as you can see, my cluster has now been provisioned. So I'm just gonna update my kube context. There we go. So. I wanted to just verify that. See what pods are up and running in my cluster in all the namespaces. There we go. Great. And so now I'm going to turn my attention to the right tab over here um, in my terminal. And um, this is a folder that has uh, some basic manifest files um, for um, and then Node.js application that I was referring to earlier. And all I'm gonna do is deploy the pod. If you wanna have a look at what that actually contains, let me expand this a little bit so you can see it. And so this is for 
uh, an application named Express Test, and uh, the image is stored in a repository in my Docker account, and this is public, so you can go ahead and use it. And the port um, that the application listens for traffic on is port 8080, as you can see over here. So when I run the port forward command, as you would expect, that is what I'm going to be specifying. So you can see over here, kubectl port forward, the name of the pod, which is Express Test 8080. Um, but before I do that, I need to actually create this application. Great, and so it has been deployed. So I can just run kubectl, keep making that typo get pods and that should be in the default namespace as we can see it's up and running which is great so all that I have to do at this point is run the port forward command great and we can see over there that that is up and running and so I'm gonna open my browser and I'm gonna go to localhost port 8080 and as you can see, so that is actually my application, but the path that I want is test, and that should give me simple node app working. I'm just gonna expand that so that you can see it. And that is it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're interested in more videos like this, please do hit the subscribe button and stay tuned. Also, if you'd like me to cover a specific topic that you have in mind related to Kubernetes or the cloud native space at large, leave it in the comments.